J.D. Vance's words strike a chord with those who value authenticity and traditional principles, setting them against what they perceive as the contrived or unsettling stances of their opponents. His stance is more than just a defense. It's a cultural clash, pitting enduring values against the tide of modern progressivism. When Vance is labeled as weird, it's not just a casual insult. It's a calculated attempt by the political left to isolate or ridicule those who hold conservative views. This tactic reveals a deeper discomfort within his critics, who project their own insecurities onto others. I want to move on to uh, something that Governor Walls has called you and Donald Trump, and that is weird. Sure. And it is taken off. The New York Times reports that when Donald Trump was asked about it, he said, not me, they're talking about J.D. Well, certainly they've levied that charge against me more than anybody else. But I think that it drives home how they're trying to distract from their own policy failures. I mean, look, this is fundamentally schoolyard bully stuff. They can accuse me of whatever they want to accuse me of. Uh, as Harry S. Truman once said, if you can't take the heat, stay out of the kitchen. And I'm doing this because I think that me being vice president will help improve people's lives. So I, I, I accept their attacks, but I, I think that it is a little bit of projection. Dana, if you think about uh, you know, just, just take a couple of days ago. Tim Waltz gives this big speech. He's been announced as the VP nominee. And I remember when I had just been announced as the VP nominee, I gave my big speech and I saw my wife and I gave her a big hug and a kiss because I love my wife. And I think that's what a normal person does. Uh, Tim Waltz gave his wife a nice firm Midwestern handshake and then tried to sort of awkwardly correct for it. So I think that what it is, is two people, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, who aren't comfortable in their own skin because they aren't comfortable with their policy positions for the American people. And so their name calling instead of actually telling the American people how they're going to make their lives better. I think that's weird, Dana, but look, they can call me whatever they want to. You're saying Tim Walls doesn't have affection for his wife? I don't even understand that. I said that he acted weird, which he did, on a national stage in front of his wife and in front of millions of Americans who presumably were watching at home. And I think that it's projection, Dana. Look, I think... Unlike the reserved demeanor of Tim Walls, Vance's open expressions of love for his wife underscore his alignment with traditional masculinity and family values. In doing so, he presents himself as the embodiment of normal or authentic American values, standing in stark contrast to what his critics might view as awkward or forced. Vance's reference to projection digs even deeper, suggesting that those who call him weird are merely reflecting their own anxieties. This idea not only highlights the importance of self-awareness, but also warns against the dangers of self-deception. Vance's response can be seen as a strategic shift away from the pettiness of personal attacks, redirecting the focus toward a critique of his opponent's authenticity and position. By doing so, he fortifies his image as a genuine and sincere candidate, while simultaneously chipping away at his opponent's credibility. His mention of affection for his wife is more than just a personal detail. It's a calculated move to humanize himself resonating with those who cherish traditional family roles. This stands in contrast to his opponent, who may appear less relatable or empathetic. Reactions to Vance's remarks are predictably divided along partisan lines. His supporters see his defense of traditional values and authenticity as a sharp, insightful rebuke of his adversaries. Meanwhile, the role of the media in shaping public perception cannot be overlooked. Whether the media chooses to bolster Vance's message or subtly undermine it can significantly influence how his words are received by the broader public. Focusing on a politician's personal traits or labeling them as weird serves as a powerful tool to sway public opinion, often diverting attention away from substantive policy discussions 